Welcome to ROH vs TNA Glory by Honor 2011. We are in the tri state for this show, the backyard of Ring of Honor, and we begin with a video package the history of ROH, why this company means so much to so many people, and in turn, why this rivalry with TNA means so much. We go into that opening match. It's a decent match, not fantastic, but Brian Danielson comes out of it unscathed, which is the most important thing. Superb according to the game. Brian carries it in terms of mirroring performance and picks up the victory with a Sesla Bell lock. I go for the cattle mutilation there, making Christopher Daniels tap out. And it's just a match, as it does actually, to get the crowd hotter. A really good way to open the show before we get into the ROH versus TNA situation. Brian doesn't have his TNA World Heavyweight Championship with him tonight. Get the impression that with an ROH crowd, him coming out with that belt might not get the best reaction. He looks ready for Bound for Glory, it has to be said, as we go into the first inter-promotional match. And it is a battle royal featuring quite a few lower level guys. It's only a decent match. Um, you can see all the people on screen there. But the people from Ring of Honor we've brought in, it's Colin O'Reilly, Rhett Titus and King. But then Xavier, a former Ring of Honor world champion, Adam Pearce, Matt Cross, Jack Evans, Jimmy Rave and Rocky Romero. Just some people I thought I'd have a look at their abilities. Of course, you don't get the individual ratings in a battle royal, unfortunately. But in 11 minutes and 16, Homicide wins the match. Kenny King, Paul London and Rocky Romero were the final four, with Kenny King being the final elimination. Paul London getting the most eliminations during the course of the match, but eventually being thrown out by Rocky Romero. And most of the guys who aren't full-time roster members are just there on a one-night deal. A Ring of Honor legend celebrates but technically he was representing TNA it's not like he's got the TNA logo on his shirt or anything but he is a TNA contracted talent he stands tall not the start perhaps that the Ring of Honor guys would have wanted and it goes from bad to worse as the forefathers defeat Brody Lee, Jimmy Jacobs and Steve Carino. You may say this isn't the way to debut a big monster like Brody Lee but you can see from his 31 that he's somebody we're going to have to work with and build up and I wasn't happy with this thrown together team beating the forefathers of TNA. Beer Money put Brody through a table on the outside which leaves him not involved for the finish then they are able to isolate Jimmy Jacobs hitting a DWI. Brody Lee, as we expected, the weak link. I explained why that was. It's another decent match, and we see that the Forefathers guys are continuing to subtly hint at the face turn. They've been faces for a few months now, just something I forgot to set into motion, so they will be turned when there's enough build up. The Forefathers celebrate another win for TNA wrestlers. Again, the Ring of Honor guys pulling their hair out, although a big part of that is Jimmy Jacobs and Steve Carino, and they're currently busy picking their teeth off the canvas. We then go into Desmond Wolf and Roderick Strong versus Jay Lethal and Samoa Joe. Wolf and Joe will be on opposite sides tomorrow night as well in the Team Aries versus Team Angle match. Desmond Wolf and Strong pick up the victory when Wolf pins Jay Lethal following a jawbreaker lariat as per the stipulation of their last match on Evolve, that terrible 41 rated match I think it was. Wolf will never get to challenge again against Jay Lethal for the Evolve Championship so we just wanted to bring his story with Lethal to a close by him getting this pin. It's not a title match, it's not as significant as those two losses were, but still, he comes out of it looking good with the momentum going into the next show. Angle's default to six minutes, and I must have forgot to put this to two because of the lack of anything interesting happening. Fair enough, because we had Wolf and Strong standing tall in the ring for six minutes. Another big win for two Ring of Honor alumni, but they are TNA guys, so things are not going well at all for Ring of Honor. It's supposed to be their show, and all of a sudden, they're losing match after match after match. And as we go into the next one, we see Tyler Black with the X Vision title. He's rubbing that in the face of the Ring of Honor fans, which he's supposed to be representing them, but we want him to be the heel in this match and Generico to be the face, despite the fact that Generico's technically representing TNA. So we're not really going too much into the ROH versus TNA thing for the live crowd, but it's something that the commentators will be following. We have a mixed commentary team of Ring of Honor and TNA announcers, but Black is basically blaming the fans for the struggles of the new age of Honor so far. That's another thing that's important to remember. This isn't so much ROH versus TNA, it's the new age of Honor versus TNA. So Wolf, Strong, Brian, 
Homicide, all technically TNA guys, but I think they would still get a warm reception from the Ring of Honor fans, and that's what Generico comes out to do, because he cuts off Tyler Black while he is slagging off the fans. He even says that he's starting to remember why he left Ring of Honor. As much as he loves this company, he hates all the fans. Generico's heard enough, and without the introductions, we just go straight into this match, and it's a good match. It lasts 15 minutes, 75 from Tyler Black, a 60 from El Generico. Does get a note that there's a lack of psychology on display. Again, don't necessarily think that is a fair note, and it says Jacob's at ringside, so we will just ignore that, but the story is that with no cabana, with no Jacobs, with no outside involvement whatsoever, Tyler Black was desperate to prove himself after all the talk that he was afraid of El Generico, that he couldn't beat El Generico. Well, tonight's not the night that he silences them critics because while he's in control, El Generico can build an impressive comeback. That's something that I want to be a key part of his character, the fact that he can fight from underneath. When all seems lost, it looks like he's going to go down, but he will not stop fighting and eventually a halluva kick and the 1-2-3 sees El Generico crowned the new X Division Champion and while it is a TNA Championship changing hands on a Ring of Honor show, I still feel like the fans would be on El Generico's side here, especially after Tyler Black's pre-match vitriol and he celebrates this huge win. We really want to put over what a massive moment this is for him. He has been beat down, he has been belittled, he, it's been suggested that he's a comedy wrestler, that he's nothing more than a mask and a gimmick. Well, he's shown tonight that he is an incredible competitor by defeating one of the most strongly booked and protected wrestlers we have. If you look at Tyler Black's record for the last year since he came to this company, he has won a huge amount of matches and been protected in defeats. Massive for El Generico, it has to be said. He is in pain, of course, after the match. It's a brutal and physical match. Really want to get that over. But Colt Cabana joins him to help him back to his feet and raise his hand. Hopefully a feel-good moment as El Generico, who's been very much a mid-card guy, is now getting his moment on this huge show. We then get a disappointing promo from Punk, I'll have to admit, and he's asked about this so-called disaster for Ring of Honor tonight. He admits that Black losing just then was a disaster, but the rest isn't because this is about championships and power. He's sure that Black will get his title back at the first time of asking, so he's not even sweating that. He's bringing the Ring of Honor championship back where it belongs tonight, and then tomorrow night, he's going to take the World Heavyweight Championship of TNA from Brian Danielson. I meant to actually put Brian Danielson on screen here, walking in and confronting him, but I completely forgot to do that. That's quite annoying, so I think that would have added to the segment. But nonetheless, Punk doing well without a script. And while we do lose heat ahead of the match, I've got another segment that, fingers crossed, will bring that back up as we go into the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships match. I gave this 20 minutes, so I was worried, to be fair, but... The Briscoes do hold their own with two decent performances. We get the crowd buzzing because I actually put it as a, a mayhem match. So we wanted the booking and the way the match goes to play into the hands of the Briscoes. A lot of going to the outside, a lot of the match breaking down. And this is where they find their edge. Jay Briscoe pinning Charlie Haas with a Briscoe device. Defence number two of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships for them. So the tide may well be turning. It's a back and forth match. And perhaps you could see this as an upset when you see how over Shelton Benjamin is and how, again, a team that I've booked very strongly throughout their year and a half with a company. Tonight was the ROH night and I think the Briscoes deserve the big win on the big stage. They stand tall. Still the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. We then get a promo from AJ Styles, which isn't at the level I'd hoped it to be. And CM Punk's on screen, so I forgot to put Brian on screen for one segment, and I've put Punk on screen when he shouldn't be. Nonetheless, he talks about how much this title means to him, his time in Ring of Honor, that despite the fact that he is loyal to TNA, he's not going to deny that, he does still love this promotion. Despite that, he still expects a hostile reception tonight, and that's completely fine. That's not what's important to him. What's important is leaving tonight as the Ring of Honor World Champion and taking the TNA World Championship at Bound for Glory. We then go into the video package that promotes the rivalry. I did hope that this would get our storyline back up. Nonetheless, I'm confident that these two can pull out a huge main event. The Ring of Honor World Championship match gets an 83 rating. I have to admit I'm very disappointed with that. I think it's the storyline's heat, to be fair, that's let us down. An 89 from Punk, an 84 from AJ Styles. 
It's described as an exceptional match. Perhaps I've got a little bit greedy with how things have gone in recent months. The first thing to note is that there is no outside involvement. It's a straight one-on-one -on -one match. But when AJ Styles goes for a phenomenal forearm, that move that has taken down so many guys in the past, Punk grabs the referee and puts him in front of him. This causes a little bit of a miscommunication or whatever you want to call it, where AJ has, has to stop himself, essentially. When he lands, he's a little bit disoriented. Punk then pushes the referee out of the way and hits him with a go to sleep. The one, two, three in the middle of the ring and we have a new Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. It will be CM Punk taking the ROH title in to Bound for Glory. He could now leave this weekend the nightmare scenario for TNA as both the Ring of Honor and TNA World Heavyweight Champions. While this is put over by the TNA commentators as a disaster, I do think this would get a really strong positive reaction because of how pro Ring of Honor Punk has been and how pro TNA AJ Styles has been. And while TNA may have picked up a lot of wins on the night, the key matches, Briscoe's VW GTT, and more importantly, this one sees Ring of Honor guys standing tall. And that's what he does. He celebrates with the Ring of Honor World Championship. He says that he is coming for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. But he knows that this is the most important one. He then sits in the ring continuing this post main event promo. Making a vow to every single fan who has come to the building tonight. He thanks them for their support of Ring of Honor. And because of that he promises one thing. Ring of Honor will live and TNA will die. So a huge statement from CM Punk to end the pay-per-view, which gets an 82 rating. It's good. I shouldn't probably complain too much, but I am disappointed with an underwhelming main event, to be fair, because it also makes me worry a little bit about tomorrow night's. I do think that with Brian in there, with a triple threat, it does have a little bit more than this one. The TNA World Heavyweight Championship match, of course, has to deliver for Bound for Glory to be one of our top shows ever. Again, it's a good show throughout. These, these moments on there, El Generico becoming the X-Vision Champion is great. The Briscoes solidifying themselves with a big win. And I think everything on there, I think it's a good card that we've put together and a good show. But considering the hype that I've put into this, it's not quite where I wanted it to be. Nonetheless... We still have Bound for Glory and that is the, I'm not saying it's the real important show because of course I've done everything to build this one up, but it is what everything is building to. This is the setup for tomorrow night because the huge, huge implications now. CM Punk is the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. Brian Danielson will defend the TNA World Heavyweight Championship against AJ Styles and CM Punk. And I'll leave it with that point again. Just want to really emphasize how disastrous it could be for TNA if CM Punk leaves Bound for Glory weekend as the double Ring of Honor and TNA World Heavyweight Champions. You can see the Bound for Glory card on screen there. Hopefully you want to join me for that. Hopefully this has whet the appetite. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.